Thursday, February 21st edition of Westman Newsline. I'm Dylan Donald alongside Nolan Dwinser and Randy Joseph Lilly. In today's news, we'll tell you about a robbery at a Dauphin gas station that occurred last night. As well, nurse practitioners have been given the green light to conduct MRIs to make the process more time efficient. And Noland will be in with Sports Noland. I understand last night saw a battle of NBA teams on hot streaks in Toronto. That's right, Dylan. The Raptors ho hosted the Memphis Grizzlies. The Raps were looking for their sixth straight win, while Memphis tried to win their fifth in a row. As well, at the Scotties Tournament of Hearts, Manitoba's Jennifer Jones put her undefeated record on the line against an equally impressive Ontario rink. I'll have that story and more later on in sports. Thanks, Noland. And Randy will be in with weather. Randy, should I bother making outdoor plans for the weekend? Get ready for spring, Dylan. Mother Nature may be messing with us, but enjoy the near zero temperatures anyway. Currently in Brandon, there is light snow and it's minus 11. Winds are out of the southeast at 15 kilometers per hour. I'll be back a little later on with all your weather details. Thanks, Randy. Dauphin Mounties were called just after 8.30 p.m. to a gas station on Main Street last night. They say a lone male entered the store, armed with what appeared to be a rifle or shotgun, and demanded that the clerk empty the till. Police say the clerk was not harmed, and after taking an undisclosed amount of cash, the robber fled on foot. The suspect is described as being about 6 feet tall and 200 pounds. He was wearing black track pants, a grey toque, and a black jacket with red and white sleeves. Police are still looking for the thief and say he is armed and could be dangerous. Manitoba is expanding the role of nurse practitioners by allowing them to authorize MRIs for patients. Nurse practitioners are registered nurses with a master's levels education and clinical experience that allows them to diagnose illnesses, treat conditions, prescribe medication and order diagnostic tests. More than 100 nurse practitioners work in healthcare facilities across the province, including hospitals, quick care clinics, and primary care clinics and personal care homes. Health Minister Teresa Oswald says the change will save patients from making an extra visit to the doctor and redu reduce demands on physicians' times. Some frozen beef burgers sold by Canada Safeway are being recalled because they may be contaminated with E. coli bacteria. The recall includes the Gourmet Meat Shop Big and Juicy Burger and the Gourmet Meat Shop Prime Rib Burger with a best before date of August the 14th. Also affected are Butcher's Cut Pure Beef Patties, which are sold in packages of 10, 20 and 40 and also bearing a best before date of August 14th. The products were distributed in Manitoba and, other, and the other western provinces along with Ontario and the Northwest Territories. The Manitoba government is imposing new limits on election advertising by lobby groups and other bodies. The NDP cabinet has set a $5,000 limit on so-called third-party advertising during election campaigns. The move affects union, unions, interest groups and anyone else outside of the political office and includes fines of up to $50,000. The idea was first approved by legislature in 2000 but was never enacted until now. It's not clear how much the limit will impact major ad campaigns that have been traditionally been run by the Manitoba Nurses Union and other groups. Because Manitoba has fixed election dates and the limit only affects the campaign period, interest groups can run a lot of ads right up until the election campaign starts. There are also exemptions that allow advertisements as long as they do not oppose or promote a particular party or candidate. If you're looking to take a trip down memory lane, then there's a new store here in the Wheat City that allows you to do just that. Westman Newsline visited Maluga's memorabilia to file this report. Nestled in the 900 block of Rosser in downtown Brandon lies Maluga's memorabilia. This small business is dedicated to rare collectibles. This is clear right from the moment you walk in the door. Glenn Maluga started operations in October and has turned a lifelong hobby into a business. Maluga is a family man who works full-time and runs his memorabilia store part-time. He tells us what makes his job worthwhile. Everybody needs to be a kid in some form or way in life. Um, as an adult, 42-year-old man, family of six, uh, every day you look in your mail and you see you have bills and stuff like that that make you feel, you know, you're, you're, you're an adult. Uh, you need something to make you escape. Um, some people have bad crutches in life, uh, some people have good, and uh, to me, if this kind of stuff makes me feel like, like a kid again. Some of the rare items he has on display include Hi. comics, 
such as The Amazing Spider-Man No. 1, hard to find Star Wars collectibles, autographed memorabilia such as jerseys and posters just to name a few. There's a host of things on display that will bring out someone's inner child. Maluga admits that Brandon is a hit and miss market when it comes to collectibles and getting his store's name out there is sometimes difficult. And any small business faces a whole range of challenges that must be overcome. Being in Brandon, which is a small market, uh, a lot of a lot of my business is done online. Um, just but Brandon, you're only dealing with 45,000 people, the economy, stuff like that. But uh, with collectibles, people always always like things they like, so they'll always look for something that uh, brings them back to their youth or just uh, gives them their own little peace of mind. Despite the challenges, Maluga is optimistic about the future for his collectible store. For those who want to revisit their childhood, Maluga's memorabilia may have what you are looking for. For Westman Newsline with photographer Eric McIsaac, I'm Dylan Donald. From memory lane to living the dream, let's take a look at where today's money markets are currently sitting. Westman Newsline, produced by the IMA Media Production Students of Assiniboine Community College. Local news, weather, and sports on Brandon's only TV newscast, Westman Newsline, airing at 1 p.m. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday on WCG-TV. Turning to international news now, lawyers for Oscar Pistorius are continuing to argue that the athlete be granted bail before his trial for the murder of Reva Steenkamp. And there's been a sensational revelation about the top investigator in the case. Police say Hilton Bota, the lead detective in the murder probe, is facing charges of attempted murder. It goes back to a 2009 case where Bota and other officers allegedly opened fire at a minibus they were chasing. While we here in Westman are still digging out after yet another batch of snow fell overnight, in the U.S., 30 million people are in the path of a storm that is expected to cover 18 states in snow and ice. Ed Payne tells us about some of the areas affected and how they're dealing with the storm. This is southern Arizona. As the massive winter snowstorm started gearing up, coating the cactus and palm trees with snow and sleet. One woman says her daughter came to the state for a vacation. I have my daughter here from Maine, and she came for sun, and so I'm disappointed for that reason. The snow has gotten even heavier. The storm halted play at WGC Match Play Championship, turning the course of Dove Mountain into a snowy plain. Snow began piling up in Kansas Wednesday afternoon. Crews plowed and treated roads, but roads were still slick and dangerous. I want to urge everybody, uh, really, if you don't have to travel, please don't travel. You could get up to uh, 20 inches of snow on some of the I-70 corridor. Uh, and Traveling, very, very hazardous, just wisest, just, just don't go. forecast from Colorado to Indiana. You are not in Nebraska air snow brooms to clear runways and the Our apologies for the technical difficulties. Elsewhere in the news, a French family, including four children, has been kidnapped in Cameroon. They were abducted near the border with Nigeria, where they are now being believed to be held. The abductions have raised concerns that foreigners living in the region, especially those from Western countries, may be at a greater risk from militant attacks. A local television station reported Wednesday that French military and intelligence officers have entered northern Cameroon in search of the family. That's it for news, but stay tuned. Randy is up next with Newsline Weather. Good afternoon with Newsline Weather. I'm Randy Joseph Lilly. Here at Westman Newsline, we like to do our research. And what we found today is that you can expect some pretty nice weather in the next little while. In fact, for the whole weekend, we should be flirting with zero. Currently in Brandon, there is light snow and it's minus 11. Winds are out of the southeast at 15 kilometers per hour. 
This evening will drop to minus 12. The snow is expected to stop later this evening and the sky will be partly cloudy. With the wind chill, it'll feel more like minus 19. Overnight, we should expect minus 14. Winds will drop to 10 kilometers per hour and the wind chill will make it feel like minus 22. Taking a look at our radar image, you'll see a lot of precipitation as we're seeing some snow right now and there is the possibility of more throughout the weekend. Moving to our satellite image, there is mostly some light cloud cover over the next few days. Now turning to our five day forecast now, ranging, there it is, from minus six to minus two, we really are that close to zero. By the start of next week, our lows will actually be single digits. Now taking a look around the region, Portage and Winnipeg are both in at minus 13. Dauphin up north is minus 12. And everywhere else is minus 11. That's Nipawa, Minidosa, Verdon, Carberry, and Killarney. Seasonal norms for this time of year are a high of minus 7 and a low of minus 18. The record high was set back in 1984 when we saw a temperature of plus 9.7. The record low is minus 34.4 back in 1956 when I was negative 30 years old. Once again in Brandon, there is light snow and it's minus 11. Winds are out of the southeast at 15 kilometers per hour. That's it for weather, but stick around. Nolan's up next with Newsline Sports. Good afternoon with Newsline Sports. I'm Nolan Windsor. Manitoba's Jennifer Jones remains perfect at the Scotties Tournament of Hearts after a 9-7 victory over Ontario's Rachel Homan. Homan and Jones both came into this morning's contest tied for first place with a record of 7-0. Jones now has sole possession of first place with an 8-0 record and will face Quebec later this evening. Homan now 7-1 will play Nova Scotia tonight. With the win, Jones has secured herself a playoff spot. Zach Randolph had 17 points and 18 rebounds as the Grizzlies stretched their win streak to five games with an 88-82 win over the Toronto Raptors on Wednesday night. Mike Conley had 17 points, 6 rebounds and 6 assists for the Grizzlies, which led by 11 points at halftime but had to withstand a rally by Toronto late in the game. Toronto's Allen Anderson caught fire in the fourth quarter, shooting 4 of 5 from 3-point range and collecting 15 of his game-high 19 points. At one point, Anderson had 15 straight Raptor points. Amir Johnson, who brought the Air Canada Centre crowd out of their seats late in the third quarter when he threw down a monstrous one-handed jam over Randolph, had 16 points and five rebounds. The loss snapped Toronto's five-game win streak. It was the first game between Memphis and Toronto since their three-team trade on January 31st that put Rudy Gay into a Raptors jersey. Gay finished 13 points in the loss. The Battle of Pennsylvania resumed last night as the Flyers and Penguins continued their storied rivalry in Pittsburgh. Jakub Voracek scored the go-ahead goal with a minute 31 remaining in the third period to cap a hat-trick and lead the Philadelphia Flyers to a wild 6-5 victory over the Pittsburgh Penguins on Wednesday. Voracek scored three timely goals, pocketing his first of the game to give the Flyers a, a one-goal lead with 10 seconds to play in the middle frame. His second goal gave him 200 career points, and his third goal gave the Flyers a two-goal lead after erasing an earlier two-goal deficit. Goaltender Ilya Brzezolov overcame a shaky start for his eighth victory. Final arguments have been made in the trial of a former Calgary Stampeder accused of assaulting his ex-girlfriend. Joffrey Reynolds is charged with assault causing bodily harm, common assault, and breaking and entering with intent. The Crown contends Reynolds broke into Caitlin Ward's apartment and tackled and choked her. But Reynolds' lawyer, Randy Collins, says the former All-Star was drunk and asleep when Ward came in and began punching and shoving him, angry that he had cheated on her. Collins says Ward is a strong woman and his client only used enough force to calm her down. The judge is to make his ruling on Monday. And Dylan, that's it for sports. Thanks, Nolan, and that's all the time we have for you today. Be sure to join us again next Tuesday for Brandon's only TV newscast, Westman Newsline.